what are some of like the practices um, that happen in Benin and happen in our bloodlines that can actually affect um, the, their offspring? Okay, let, let's let's go right back to right back. the book of genetics, right? Genesis. Yeah, the whole world was plunged into original sin, which is called Adamic sin. Yeah, Adam fell; he sinned, and as a result of that sin, the spirit of God in him left left him and went back to God. So Adam died a spiritual death. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, as a result of Adamic sin, the whole world suffered from that Adamic sin, right. for which salvation was offered to us through the redemptive work of Christ, Jesus, on the cross, so that we could be saved. So we don't need to go too far. Mm. So in iniquity, were all of us born. What iniquity? The original sin that affected the whole human race. Right. And the Bible is replete, says that in, in the book of Romans, in Hebrews. So we don't need to go too far. God said also, says to the children of Israel, that the iniquities of the fathers are imputed to the third and fourth, fourth generations. Generation. Yeah. Now let's go back to Genesis. When God created Adam, he blessed him and said, be fruitful, multiply. Yeah, replenish their subdue yeah. and have dominion. dominion. Yeah. So there is an eternal principle of multiplication. Anything will multiply. The good will multiply. The bad will multiply. And the ugly will multiply. Mm. So remember, Adam sinned. And when Adam sinned, yes, and he became depraved in his intellect, depraved in the realms of his soul, uh, and so on and so forth, <clears throat> the scriptures begin to declare that he had sons in his own image and not the image of God. And by the time we get to Genesis chapter 6, God says, I want to... Uh, 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 renovate the uh, earth yeah. by flood because the evil of man has what? Multiplied. Mm. Yeah? In the earth. And now in Genesis chapter 6, the fallen angels were procreating with the daughters of men to bring a race of people that were grotesque giants called the Nephilim, like Goliath, yeah, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So all that was a multiplication. Right. So all the giants, the Nephilim, Goliath, and Co. Where did that come from? Mm. From Genesis chapter six, fallen angels procreating but, with the daughters of men. But that in itself is is pretty interesting because a lot of people they would say because you know, Noah was, uh, he was righteous in his day. Um, and also meaning like his blood was pure. When the flood came, then all of that was kind of, you know, washed away. However, then we see David fighting giants. We see, we see Goliath. And we also remember that his sons married. Very good. So remember that Noah had sons, Shem, Japheth, and Ham. Yeah. And they were saved through the flood, but they interacted yeah. with that fallen world and that depraved world before the flood. Mm. So some of the experiences from the pre antediluvian age right. were boarded on the on the ark. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And so boom, I'll give you one. I'll give you one. Go on. Ham had a son called Canaan. Yeah. We read that in Genesis chapter 8. And he was the father of the Canaanites, which included Sodom and Gomorrah. Wow. Where did that stuff come from? Mm. Okay? Yeah. And the Canaanites were a sexually deviant race of people. 
Mm. That because of their sin and iniquity, God kicked them out of the land and gave the land to the children of God, mm. Israel, the Jews, the Hebrews. Yeah. Let's give another one about bloodlines. Now, this is good. Check this out. We find in Genesis that Judah, Judah has three sons. The first son was Ur. He was wicked in the sight of God, so God killed him. The culture at that time was if an older brother died childless. Then the younger brother would wife the marry the older brother's wife yeah, and raise up a seed for the older brother. Mm. So uh Jacob Judah's second son, Onan, went to raise was supposed to raise up a seed for his older brother, Ur, uh, and he spilt his seed on the ground, so so he died mm. because he was wasting his seed mm. because he deliberately didn't want to raise up a godly seed for his older brother. The youngest son was too young to get married, so Judah made a promise that when his youngest son grew to the age of maturity, he would give him to to be a husband to Tamar, his oldest son's wife. I wonder how the son felt about that. <laughs> okay. Now, Judah kind of slackened concerning the promise. Yeah. So Tamar took matters into her own hands and she dressed up as a prostitute. Yeah. Yeah. And we laid Judah on his travels and Judah went into her and had a sexual relationship with her that resulted in her pregnancy. Yeah. And the society says, hey, Judah, your daughter-in-law has been caught in some kind of infidelity and the law says she must be stoned to death. So she brings out Judah's ring, which was the signet, the seal of authority, and his staff, and says that the man whom I'm, who I'm pregnant for owns this staff and this ring, and it was Judah's. Mm. So Judah had to apologize to the whole society and to her. But this is the issue here. Judah committed incest. Judah went into a prostitute. All that sexual immorality and uncleanness entered the lineage of Judah mm. for which Jesus Christ was going to come from. Mm. Onan spilt his seed on the ground. What was he doing? Technically, he was trying to abort the coming of Christ because the Christ was going to come to the lineage of Judah. Mm. That's how the abortion issue came. It was aborting the destiny and the coming of Christ. Whether he knew it or he didn't do it, that's what he ended up inadvertently doing. Yeah. All that sexual immorality uncleanness, deviant behavior, prostitution entered into the lineage of Christ. And by the time we get to 10 generations, David can't keep his eyes off women. Because mm. it's in the line. Chase the blood, it's in the bloodline. It's line. in the blood. Yeah. He couldn't keep his ha hands off women. Anything that looked good in a skirt, David was after. Mm. 
-hmm. He became voyeuristic. He's on the roof and he's ogling at Sheba, mm -hmm. having a bath. And God calls the situation Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go a little bit deeper. His sons went bionic. Solomon, mm -hmm. 1,000 yeah. wives or concubines. But also the mess that happened hold in David's it, family. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. David's son, Amnon, rapes his half-sister. That's what Tama. I'm saying. Yeah. Tama, are you with me? Absalom sleeps with his father's concubines on the rooftop. So that's that incest. So all this stuff has been multiplying generationally from what was the point of entry? Judah. 10 generations before. How did the Holy Spirit show me this? Because mm -hmm. David's daughter that was raped by her half-brother Amnon was called Tamar. Mm -hmm. And 10 generations before that, there was another Tamar that dressed up as a, viol as a prostitute that was the subject of incest. No way. <laughs> Yo, I just got that. <laughs> that is nuts. Of course it is. Oh my god. So, so so David now understands where all this mess is coming from. Oh my lord. And so he could go back into his bloodlines 10 generations <clears throat> and begin to deal with the roots. Mm. Many times all these things come up in our lives. Hey, you probably look like your dad or your mother. Right. Where did those genes come from? Yeah, mm -hmm. and your ch your 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 child, the son, is probably going to look like you, and and your wife. The, he's going to have the 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 DNA, yep. your DNA. So he's going to have your char certain characteristics. You know what happened in my life? Um. There are many things that happened to my grandfather and to my father that were just naturally embedded in my life. Yeah. And I found, hey, where did these thoughts, where did these habits come from? Yeah. They were generational iniquitous patterns right. and cycles that were perpetrated in generations before I was born. In my bloodlines that I have just explained to you concerning David's. Mm. And I have to ask, where did this come from in my life? And I'm trying to lop off the branches, but, but that's just what most of us are trying to do. Let's kick the habit. Yeah. But the habit is a gen comes from a generational iniquity that has roots. Mm. And many of us want to deal with the branches and the fruit without dealing with the roots. Yeah. The roots just grow more new, the new trunk with new branches with stronger fruit.